How on earth did Jurassic Park pave the way for South Korea's global domination? It is intriguing how Steven Spielberg's dinosaurs propelled Korea's rise to prominence. It is no doubt that Korea's footprint is now visible anywhere globally. Parasite. As the South Korean thriller Parasite became the first non-English language film to win Best Picture. It, Gangnam Style has become the first video to clock up a billion views on YouTube. From entertainment, culinary wonders, to its culture, among other things. First, they have stolen our hearts. Later on, they conquered the world. How did South Korea do it? Was it by accident? Or was there a grand scheme of things? Here's a deep dive into the South Korean magic. The kids of the 90s, at least in the Philippines, were exposed to different cultures beyond its shores, thanks to the medium of television. Mexican soaps, complete with its romantic nuances, are sure staples in the late 90s. Hindi ko alam. Malaki nang pinagbago ko at hindi ko alam kung gusto ko. After a long day at school, we would rush to go home to watch Japanese anime. On Sundays, Chinese soaps and cooking shows dominate the airwaves in the mornings. That was the typical scene, at least in the late 90s. Now here's the interesting part. Our generation, which initially embraced Korean culture in the new millennium, has sustained its love for all things Korean over an extended period. In contrast, Filipinos' interest in Mexican dramas, for instance, waned as the content failed to integrate into their lifestyle and culture, lacking a lasting impact. Of course, it started with drama. Online streaming wasn't a thing then, like today. The big breakthrough of Korean culture-based imports happened when K-dramas such as Winter Sonata and Autumn in My Heart gained cult followings. It turned out that the Philippines wasn't alone. Elsewhere in the world, the rise of Korean domination is unstoppable. And with the rise of Netflix and YouTube, consuming everything Korean has never been easier. The rest, they say, is history. This phenomenon has then been given its name, the Korean Hallyu. This is the umbrella term that refers to the global popularity of South Korean culture, particularly in the form of entertainment such as K-dramas, K-pop, and the movies. But what we need to understand is that the Korean Hallyu was not an accident. It was a deliberate design that capitalized on their country's culture and national branding. And in order to understand how Korea became a global phenomenon, it is important to revisit its history. In 1910, Korea was annexed by the Empire of Japan after years of war, intimidation, and political machinations. The Japanese government sought to assimilate Korea into the Japanese Empire by erasing Korean cultural and national identity. Korean language and customs were suppressed, and Japanese culture was imposed. The country would be considered a part of Japan for 35 years until 1945. After Japan left, Korea got split into North and South by the United States and the Soviet Union in 1945. It was supposed to be temporary, but it led to North Korea being backed by the Soviet Union and South Korea being backed by the United States. Korea's split into North and South mirrored the Cold War's global rivalry. Cold War was a time of intense competition between the U.S. and the Soviet Union and their allies. In 1950, North Korea, led by Kim Il-sung, initiated the Korean War by invading South Korea in a surprise attack, seeking to unify the peninsula under communism. 
The international response led by the United States and its allies supported South Korea in defense. At long last, the misery and the bloodshed of the war in Korea has been halted. The conflict lasted until 1953, ending with an armistice establishing a demilitarized zone. Formal peace treaty was never signed, leaving the Korean War technically unresolved up to this very day. After the Korean War, South Korea faced political instability under President Sing Nam Ri. The government controlled society, suppressed dissent through censorship, and shapes cultural narratives to align with its ideology. This limited the freedom of artists, writers, and creators to explore diverse perspectives and topics in their work. The 1980s saw a growing pro-democracy movement in South Korea, marked by a widespread protest and demands for political liberalization. During this time, university students were at the forefront of protest against the dictatorship which have been growing ever since the Gwangju uprising in 1980. The thirst for democracy and political change eventually led to the end of military rule. And on the 19th day of resistance, the regime gave in, announcing plans to restore direct elections. In fact, in 1987, South Korea held its first direct presidential elections, marking a shift towards a more democratic governance structure. And this is when a new brand of revolution started to emerge. This coincided with a cultural renaissance in South Korea. The newfound political freedoms allowed for a more diverse range of creative expression in film, literature, music, and the arts. Creators were able to explore more diverse and innovative themes, contributing to a flourishing creative economy. The surge in South Korean cultural popularity owes much to key factors and Experts agree that much of its success can be attributed to the strategic backing from the South Korean government. It embraced globalization as a pivotal driver for the social economic progress of the nation and as a force shaping its culture. Among the chief policies that the South Korean government adopted, is its pivot to culture as the country's main export. It was a novel and an untested idea by then. And for the weirdest of anecdotes, the start of the Korean wave was inspired by, you guess it, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. During a presentation to President Kim Yong-sum, the Presidential Advisory Board on Science and Technology emphasized the cultural industry's export potential. They were particularly intrigued by how the Hollywood movie Jurassic Park generated as much revenue compared to the overseas export of 1.5 million Hyundai cars. This led to the promotion of the Motion Pictures Industry Act requiring Korean films to screen for at least 146 days with a risk of license suspension. Filmmakers also received financial aid through a film council prioritizing alternative films. These policies were referred to by the Korean government as a quote-unquote chimneyless industry for economic growth. The goal was for Korea to be one of the world's top 5 content powers in 2010, with its gaze anchored on economic resurgence. However, the cultural policy direction shifted during the Lee myung bak government, transitioning from an economic-focused strategy to a national branding and competitiveness approach. Under the Lee administration, the concept of global Korea embraced economic political, ideological, and cultural initiatives to shape South Korea's national image 
as forward thinking, multicultural, and visionary, and thus gave birth to the soft power of South Korea. Because, you know, as a middle power between China and Japan, South Korea utilizes niche diplomacy by prioritizing cultural exports to compensate for its limited superpower capacity. And this government-backed strategy strategically promotes its culture worldwide, shaping a positive country image to attract global interest in tourism, investment, and cooperation. Scholars typically divide the evolution of the Korean wave into three periods. The initial phase, known as Hallyu 1.0, emerged with the popularity of TV dramas like What is Love, Daejeon Gyum, and Winter Sonata, primarily gaining traction in China, Taiwan, and Japan, with varying interests across Asia. The subsequent phase, called Hallyu 2.0, introduced diverse content, expanded geographically, engaged a variety of fan groups, and facilitated artist fan communication through social networking services and platforms like YouTube. Notably, K pop, which blends various music genres and featuring intricate choreography, gained global attention. Hallyu 3.0, starting from the mid 2010s, is distinct from previous phases in its expanded markets, new content production methods, and active use of social media and over-the-top platforms. Hallyu has contributed to the growth of South Korea's gross domestic product and in 2005, sectors linked to the cultural content and activities including products, tourism, and film and television programs, generated $1.87 billion. Moreover, the surge in South Korean culture's popularity prompts individuals to take actions such as learning the Korean language, for example. This is evident in the global increase in the interest, demonstrated by the growing number of applicants taking the Korean language proficiency test. But what's really amazing here is how it solidified the soft power of South Korea. My name is Kim Namjoon, also known as RM, the leader of the group BTS. It is an incredible honor to be invited to an occasion with such significance for today's young generation. Take this as an illustration. BTS spoke about the Sustainable Development Goals at the UN General Assembly. Hi, this is Blackpink. Almost a year ago, at the Climate Ambition Summit, we spoke of our journey to learn more about climate change. While Blackpink addressed climate change at the United Nations Climate Change Conference Summit, showcasing the influential voices of these artists on the international stage. Back then, only Hollywood stars are deemed quote-unquote influential. So here's my conclusion in all of these. The ascent of the Korean Hallyu showcases the impact of strategic cultural diplomacy. South Korea's success in exporting entertainment, particularly uh, K-dramas and K-pop, stems from historical resilience, uh, democratization and a government-backed global cultural influence vision. Vital lessons for other governments, including the government of the Philippines, include recognizing culture as a potent export, embracing globalization, and surely investing in creative industries. The government's role extends beyond financial support, as shown uh, by South Korea, to crafting policies that foster a thriving cultural ecosystem. South Korea's commitment to becoming a global content power emphasizes the importance of a clear and visionary agenda for driving cultural exports. That's all the time we have. Stay curious and see you in the next video.
Stay over here Don't wanna keep this going Can't fix what's already broke